first introduced in 2003, you can still see the first generation Toyota Vios on our roads these days. Just shows you how reliable these things are. Now in its fourth generation, finally, after almost 10 years of the third generation with two facelifts, we now have the all new 2023 Toyota Vios. There are two variants, there's the E at 89,000 and 600 ringgit and the G at 95,000 and 500 ringgit. Is it expensive? Well, if you compare the base E variant, it is more expensive than the Almera VL, which cost 84,000 ringgit and more expensive than the super basic Honda CTS at 78,000 ringgit. In its range shopping form, the G cost 95,000 and 500 ringgit, slightly cheaper than the Almera VLT, which cost 95,888 ringgit, but slightly more expensive than the Honda City V Sensing, which cost 94,600 ringgit. All three cars are essentially very competitively priced. So, should you buy the all new 2023 Toyota Vios? Let's get straight into it. Renew your car coverage online at motorcarful.com by Etika and enjoy 10% rebate, cashback and more. The Vios is a big boy now, at least bigger than it used to be. It is 5mm longer, 10mm wider and 5mm taller. Wheelbase is also 70mm longer. Despite the bigger size though, the all new Vios is actually lighter than the older one by 110 kilograms. So the G variant only weighs 1,035 kilograms, while the E weighs less at 1,015 kilograms. It would be interesting to see just how light the GR Championship version of these cars will be. At the front end, you now get a more angular look. It looks something like a certain generation of the Camry, Corolla Altis, or even the BZ4X. The angular look is different from the catfish-like appearance of the older generation. And personally, before this generation, I always found that the best looking Vios was the third generation when it was first introduced, before all those facelifts. LED headlights with LED DRLs and a follow me home function, and this is standard for both the E and G variants. Also standard, there's an aero kit which includes the front lip, side skirts, rear diffuser and rear spoiler. And personally, I would prefer if these items were optional. There's also vents on the bumper here and they're real. You can try poking them with a stick to check for yourself. Why are they there? Well, the Vios now has a larger frontal surface area, so it has to do some tricks to be a bit more aerodynamic. Drag coefficient is at 0.294. Also standard on the outside, an RFID tag which will require activation. You get 17-inch wheels with Continental Premium Contact C tyres for the G variant and 16-inch wheels with Toyo Proxxas CR1 tyres for the E variant. The G variant gets ventilated disc brakes at the front and solid disc brakes at the back. The E variant gets ventilated disc brakes at the front and drum brakes at the back. Another thing differentiating the two, the G variant gets a chrome window belt line, while the E gets a black version. The crazy thing that the Toyota engineers have done is create this fastback profile. Now, why do I call it crazy? Because obviously it has sacrificed headroom for the second row passengers, and development of this fastback profile isn't exactly cheap. But since Toyota wanted the exterior design of the Vios to stand out in its segment, they said screw it and went with it anyway. Pretty ballsy. Come to the back and you may be thinking, what is this, a BMW 3 Series, a Honda City? It's like a disease, isn't it? All cars are just trying to look like each other these days. Anyway, there's a black trim between the taillights which give the car a nice family look with the Toyota Velos. And while the taillights may look like the ones on the Honda City, it is only the upper part that illuminates, so at night, it still looks like the older generation Vios. Inside, both the steering wheel and the instrument cluster both look like they belong to a brand that we are all too familiar with, so that might bother you a little bit. Everything else though is nice as the Vios now puts in a bit more effort in terms of the interior design. You do get these brown trims on the dashboard for the door panels and they're pretty nice. They don't feel too forced, they don't feel too in your face. Naturally, for a B-segment saloon, well, it's mostly hard plastics in here but still feels nice for its segment. A big improvement in terms of ergonomics, now we get tilt and telescopic steering adjustment but only for the G variant, the E only comes with tilt adjustment, the G variant also gets paddle shifters. As for the head unit, you do get a 9 inch screen and it is great, it comes with a 360 degree view with a 3D view but you can't swipe it, you have to select the view from these buttons here. 
It would be better though if it had a dedicated physical button to turn it on. It does turn on automatically when you get into reverse, but if you're parking head first, you'd have to tap home, apps, and PVM just to turn it on. It's a bit of a hassle. It also comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, so that's great. A clever thing inside the all-new Vios, well, you do get this retractable cup holder on the vent for the driver, and it is pretty nice. It is well integrated into the dashboard. The one on the passenger side, though, I do wish it was a push to eject. You have to pull this one out and push it down. It just doesn't feel so premium. Storage space, well, the center armrest storage is pretty shallow, but you do get a nice cubby space in front of the gear lever. There's a pocket for the front passenger. Glove box size is moderate. Bonus storage space, well, you do get a holder for your sunglasses. A not so clever thing inside the cabin, well, you do get an ambient lighting with 64 colors, but it is not on the doors, not on the dashboard. It is only on the storage in front of the gear lever and this small pocket for the front passenger. It even comes with these dedicated control buttons for you to choose between these 64 colors. And I do believe that this is a bit pointless. You know what this could have been instead? A button for the 360 degree view. You do get blue lights on the floors, but this is part of the floor lighting and has nothing to do with the ambient lighting system. As for the aircon controls, well, they do feel a bit discounted as you only have two modes for your vents. It is either face only or face and feet. There is no feet only and there are no vents for your windshield. It just feels a bit weird. That aside, it does come with physical buttons, which I do like. It helps you keep your eyes on the road as you adjust the climate control. As for the seats, the cushions are rather firm for the center part of the bench and the backrest, soft for the side spots. The seats are comfortable. I've done long journeys in the car and they're pretty good. Let's point out the obvious here. Headroom in the second row of the all-new Vios isn't great. Legroom is quite all right and bench length is pretty good. Unfortunately, no center armrest in the second row here. You get pockets behind the front seats, small door bins and cup holders which are positioned quite high so you don't have to reach down to get your bottle or cup. On the floor, the center tunnel has made a return and this has increased rigidity without increasing too much weight. In that vicinity, you also get air vents and a USB type A and a USB type C socket. While some things may feel like not much care has been given to the second row passengers, Toyota has at least made the upper half of the front seats a bit narrower to allow more light to get into the back seats. As for boot space, you get 475 litres of space in the all-new Vios and that is as big as it gets as the rear seats not only don't have a 60-40 split, they do not fold down at all. Honestly, that does bother me a little bit, but this has shaved 10 kilograms from the overall weight of the car. 475 liters of space is the smallest in its class as the City has 519 liters, the Almera has 482 liters, and just to rub it in, the Proton Persona has 510 liters of boot space. You've heard this many times over now, and yes, the all-new Vios doesn't come with a spare wheel. Instead, underneath the boot floor is a foam piece with three storage compartment parts. Not that the Vios can't actually fit a spare wheel. In fact, the Vios in other countries can actually fit a full-size spare wheel. It is just that in Malaysia, we get a tyre repair kit. A benefit to this? Well, at least this has shaved 25 kilograms from the overall weight of the car. By the way, if you're looking to renew your car coverage, remember that you can do so online through mototakaful.com by Etika. When you renew with them, not only do you get a 10% rebate, you can also get cash back at the end of your policy if you don't drive as much. Renewing is also easy as everything can be done online through mototakaful.com. If we're talking about driving experience in the all-new Vios, well, we would first have to address its weight loss. It is now 110 kilograms lighter than it used to be, so the G variant weighs 1,035 kilograms, while the E variant weighs 1,015 kilograms. So that's light. And as simple as this may be in principle, this has actually improved several things in the car, like the handling, comfort, and fuel efficiency. So let's first talk about comfort. The only Vios is a comfortable car, but it does lean towards the firmer side of things. 
even if so it is perhaps one of the most comfortable cars in its segment and i guess that's just how it's been for several generations of the vios nvh now toyota has given the vios acoustic glass for the windshield and the front windows in the g variant and only on the windshield for the e variant now this i think has improved the wind noise insulation so far it has been good even at high speeds road noise a bit apparent and so is engine noise it is not luxury refined but uh, refined for its segment ergonomics now the armrest is very high and i like it as i can able to keep both my hands on the steering wheel and still somewhat rest my left elbow on the armrest gear lever is also super close to the steering wheel i think it's about 10 centimeters or less and you'd almost wish that this car was a manual car as for the driving experience the car runs a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine it makes 106 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque it is one horsepower and two newton meters down than it used to be but the vios now records 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers so it has been tuned for fuel efficiency power sacrifices aside i would say that it doesn't feel like any compromise has been made in this department and perhaps that's thanks to the weight loss of the car as well it just has countered the performance loss to drive well the vios feels like a car that you would enjoy pushing it to its limits it's just a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine but it feels light on its feet going uphill is a breeze accelerating not a big issue of course it does bring out that sound and like i said it is refined for its segment steering is great i would say that free play is at a minimal level it's also sharp this one is the g variant comes with 17 inch wheels and a set of continental premium contact seat tires we've driven this uphill downhill fast through corners my god this car is just it's just a grippy car that would make you feel confident driving through tight roads at high speeds it's just great i would say that a b segment saloon has no business being this fun to drive but the all new vios just is now what if you're not the kind to drive like a maniac well the vios is still a very nice car to drive in a very relaxed manner like i said it is one of the more comfortable cars in its segment you would have no problem cruising at highway speeds around 2000 rpm it is really quite the cruiser as well if there's anything to complain about the vios's driving experience well i would be nitpicking here and it is the fact that the steering wheel and the instrument cluster look like they belong to another brand that we're all too familiar with everything else i do love how the car drives and like i said it is a car that weighs just a bit above a thousand kilograms it would be super interesting to see how this car would turn out in its gr championship form and of course for the customers we would look forward to a GR Sport version of this car if that were to become a reality. All in all, the Vios is a competitively priced car which sort of pushes the boundaries of what a B-segment saloon should be. Sure, it does have some flaws, but so does everything else. If you'd like to know more on the all-new 2023 Toyota Vios, do log on to orderbuzz.my. If you like this video, do give it a like, share and subscribe. Also, remember to turn on notifications. If you didn't, please let us know why. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Renew your car coverage online at motorcarful.com by Etika and enjoy 10% rebate, cashback and more.